Wherever you are in the world, when floods strike, they devastate lives, killing animals and destroying crops, causing widespread destruction of property, and, in the worst cases, resulting in hundreds or even thousands of deaths, not just from drowning, but from the spread of diseases that often follow. But the effects of floods depend on where you live and the resources you have to deal with them. Being born in Bangladesh means you'll not only grow up in the most flood-prone country in the world, it also means you're likely to be poor. And that means you'll be less able to deal with floods when they inevitably arrive. In 1998, Bangladeshis experienced one of their worst ever floods. The children might look like they're having fun, but this flood made more than 30 million people homeless, and two-thirds of the country remained underwater for over 50 days. A decade later, many people are only just beginning to recover, but with climate change raising sea levels and affecting weather patterns, many believe events like this are about to become much more common. So much sand and silt has been deposited on the riverbed that each time the floods come, the water covers previously safe areas of land. But deforestation and changing agricultural practices aren't the only human factors contributing to flooding. This is what rush hour looks like in downtown Dakar. As Bangladesh's population has grown, so too have its cities. Buildings, roads and other hard surfaces Increase runoff and poor planning mean there's little infrastructure to take water away. In Dhaka city, there were large areas where, which were low lying areas, you know, which so in the monsoon season, when the flood season came, the water would go and accumulate there rather than coming into our roads and houses. But those lands are now being filled up and houses are being built. So, where does the water go? It has it just comes into the city and and blocks the roads and uh, floods the houses.